Humanity is innumerable, spread across the stars, with a military might befitting a galaxy-spanning empire like the Imperium. And yet, for all their numbers, there are a few individuals within humanity, or those who were ascended beyond it, who have become renowned even beyond their peers. In this series of logs, we shall take a look at some of those Adeptus Astartes of particular legend in this modern era, known collectively as the Champions of Humanity. Today, we explore a champion who is a psyker of incredible power and renown, blessed with a gift even if he does not see it as such. He is a philosopher, a seer, and a warrior in equal measure, and his chapter master claims that he is a critical reason that their home was not destroyed centuries ago. Though he has not joined his returned Primarch in this new era, none can doubt his worth and power both for his chapter and for the Imperium. He is the chief librarian of the Ultramarines chapter, a scion of Macrag itself, and his name is Varro Tigurius. This is Tactica Imperialis, and welcome to Champions of Humanity, a 40k Stories miniseries. The future chief librarian of the Ultramarines, Varro Tigurius, was born on the chapter's homeworld of Macrag. We sadly lack any dates for this, though I suspect it to be the late 600s or early 700s of M41. It is not believed he was of noble or any reputable lineage, nor do we have any records of his life before the Ultramarines, but we know that when he reached the appropriate age for Astartes, he was taken to the chapter's fortress monastery, the Fortress of Hera, by his parents. Once taken, the librarians of the Ultramarines quickly twigged to his psychic potential, most notably his precognitive and divinatory skills that are apparently incredibly rare even amongst the already rare Imperial Psychers. They passed on their suspicions to the chaplains who train and oversee the recruits in this early phase, most notably including a young Ortan Cassius who is now the oldest living, probably non-dreadnought, Ultramarine. Cassius supposedly set Tigurius and other recruits an impossible task to complete, but Tigurius did not even bother to attempt it as he divined its impossibility, greatly impressing the chaplain and presumably the Librarius too. Before long, Varro was taken into the Librarius and inducted into the ways of the Psyche, continuing to impress with skills seemingly never before seen within the Ultramarines. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Why is he the only Ultramarine who's ever had divination before? Or maybe I'm missing something here. We do not know which company he was first assigned to after he became a Lexicanium, but he appears in battlefield records very early as part of an undated war called the Altor Crusade. The overall commander of this crusade against the force of Eldari was either future or current first captain Severus Agaman, and the young Tigurius proved invaluable both to the captain and also to the scout company he had assumedly previously served in. By using his precognition, he was able to predict and warn of several deadly ambushes, including one at the planned armistice talks between Agaman and the Eldari Autark, likely saving the captain's life. Eventually, Tigurius was attached to the 5th company while still a Lexicanium, winning perhaps his greatest victory of his early career against a group known as the Seven Sorcerers of Harker. This battle is undated and took place on the world of, well, Harker, pitting the 5th company against a vast horde of mutants and corrupted humans led by the aforementioned Seven Sorcerers, who seem to have been Astarte Sorcerers of Chaos Undivided. The Ultramarines initially made good progress against the humans, but the arrival of the Seven began to turn the battle against them. Though wary of his foe, the young Tigurius would not back down, turning his power against all of the sorcerers as once. Perhaps thanks to his specially modified psychic hood, though mainly due to raw power, somehow the librarian was able to not only resist the sorcerers who had wreaked havoc across the Imperium, but actually defeat them in one go and consume them in flames. Unsurprisingly, this boosted Tigurius' fame and reputation within the Ultramarines, and before long the Lexicanium had become a Codicia, part of the middle tier for the Librarius. Here he continued to impress, using his precognition to great effect, particularly with the Fleet Masters of the chapter. It is said he had the power to predict when and where an enemy fleet would drop out of the warp, allowing the Ultramarines to simply sit there and blast them apart at their leisure. 
One such foe caught by this was the Orc warboss Mad Bracker, whose fleet barely stood a chance when it dropped right into the jaws of the waiting Space Marines. It seems Tagurius has not stopped this task even though his rank and fame have risen, and his power is so valued to the now legendary Fleet Admiral that he credits many of his greatest victories in many ways to the Librarian as opposed to just his own merits. If you need another example, then look no further than the closest the Ultramarines probably ever came to annihilation since becoming a chapter. High Fleet Behemoth in 745 and 41. The Tyranids cut a sway through Ultramar, devouring worlds throughout the former 500 and even nearly destroying Macrag itself, but they were defeated through the heroics of the Astartes and the fleet. However, the role of Tigurius is somewhat understated in the records of the Imperium. Not so in the Ultramarines, as Chapter Master Manius Kalgar has personally gone on record to praise the Librarian. The Lord Macrag has said that without Tigurius and his council, Macrag might actually have been destroyed by the Tyranids. We don't know if the two were together much in the run-up or the battle itself, but that is high praise indeed coming from an individual like Kalgar. Unfortunately, Tigurius' rank at this time is sadly unknown. He may have been a Codicia or an Epistolary, the highest rank save the Chief Librarian himself, but we do not believe he was Chief Librarian until sometime after the Battle of Macrag. You know, for all their record keeping, the Ultramarines don't seem very good at dating things that involve him. I literally cannot put a time on anything save for Behemoth itself. That's all I've got to estimate anything such as births, timings, the lot. Whenever it exactly was, at some point after the Tyranids were defeated on and over Macrag, Epistolary Tigurius was rewarded for his power and his efforts with promotion to the highest office a Space Marine Psychic can hope to achieve in pretty much any chapter the rank of Chief Librarian. Sadly, we don't know whether the previous holder of the position was killed to open up the role to Tigurius, or whether said previous holder stepped aside to allow Varro to ascend. This made Tigurius, if he wasn't already given his value against Behemoth, the personal advisor to Marnius Kalgar, as opposed to a captain. And it also made him the one responsible for the librarian, known as the Library of Ptolemy, after the first ever Ultramarines librarian. This in turn made him the warden of the original manuscript of the Codex Astartes contained within the heart of the library, as well as all of his duties in study, guidance, and command. Since his ascension to Chief Librarian, Tigurius has seen action all over the place, both as commander and support. He was still able to use his prophetic abilities to aid the fleets in sniping enemies as they dropped out of the warp. The Chaos Lord Neodar, for example, found all but one of his ships blown out of the sky immediately before the scant remnants were destroyed on Kalth. Such as the foresight from what are often visions or dreams, it has been said that Tigurius is, and I quote, the greatest administrator the Departmento Minotaurum has never seen. Admittedly, the Ultramarines reap almost all the benefits, but it shows just how helpful his gifts have been to the chapter, and would be if someone else had them. Much of his battlefield attention, at least early on, has been taken with the Orcs in the times after his ascension, most notably the Empire of the Arch Arsonist of Sharadon. He and other Ultramarines have led surgical strikes into the Pyromaniac Arch Arsonist domain, trying to keep the Orcs from organising into a full-blown war. Due to sheer numbers, it's basically impossible to take the Orcs out entirely, and the Arch Arsonist has become a persona beyond the individuals who've borne the title, so restriction is all that the Space Marines can do. One such attack was on the world of Boros in 944M41, where the 4th Company and the Chief Librarian responded to an Orc invasion and defeated the Greenskins, with Tigurius supposedly being such an inspirational figure in the battle that helped stall Sharadon once again. Said strikes were successful for decades, helping keep Sharadon in check. But as time has passed, the Ultramarines have become more thinly spread, and Tigurius has not been able to allocate the necessary resources. This allowed the Orcs to grow to war levels, and most infamously the Crimson Fist got almost annihilated when they accidentally poked the squig, for want of a better analogy. It is believed that the Arch Arsonist himself has invaded Ultramar as a response to this relative laxness from the Ultramarines, but there are no details of it, 
and the arsonist may have been burned out by the power of Tigurius by now. However, that's not to say that the chief librarians had it all his own way against the Greenskins, but it seems as though something, or someone, might just be keeping an eye on him. In 922 M41, Tigurius led a force to the world of Andraxus, attempting to rescue a delegation of Meganicus tech priests from an orc invasion. They got planet side just fine, but greenskin air power allowed the orcs to swarm them incredibly fast in insurmountable numbers. Outnumbered 50 to 1, the Ultramarines prepared to die and sell their lives dearly, but they were not saved by Tigurius. Instead, the enigmatic Legion of the Damned materialised between the Ultramarines and the Orcs, before committing a massacre of such ferocity that Tigurius and co barely had to fire a shot to finally break the Orcs. This was, at the time at least, the best recorded sighting of the Damned Legionnaires, as Tigurius wrote up a full report on the matter and even attempted to use his powers to learn more about them, but without success. Even beyond the rescue, Tigurius received a further reward as the tech priest who he had managed to save gave him a very special weapon he has wielded ever since, but more on that later. Interestingly, it's pretty much always been Xenos at that Valor Tigurius has faced in battle since becoming Chief Librarian, with a couple of rather notable exceptions that we'll get to. The Orcs and Tyranids are most notable, as Tigurius has pretty much gone to war with the hive mind itself, we'll get to that. But sometimes even his foresight can't save him or his ultramarine forces from a surprise defeat. The best example of this was the infamous Damnos incident which took place on the mining world of Damnos in 973 M41. Originally led by the second company's captain, a certain Carter Sicarius, who we've addressed in an earlier log in this series, the campaign started off fine, but beyond the initial planet strike, the Grand Duke of Talasar wasn't really around. The Necron Lord the Undying pretty much crippled him. This left Tigurius in overall command of the campaign to liberate Damnos. His planet strike force had met initially with great success, managing to destroy Necron siege artillery, but the chief librarian quickly learned that a final victory was not going to come. More and more Necrons continued to rise from the tombs below Damnos, and the Ultramarines were already down to half strength, forcing both Tigurius and venerable dreadnought Agrippan to effectively concede defeat without a defensible position the like of which the capital Kellenport could never provide. So the mission turned from reclamation to evacuation, as the Ultramarines did all they could to get the planet's populace and other defenders off-world before they were overrun by the Necrons. Tigurius fought on the front line of this defence, acting as both a powerhouse and an inspiration for those around him. It was costly, but it was effective, and the evacuation was completed. We're unsure whether Tigurius went back as part of the reclamation to get Damnos a few decades later, but given Kalgar and much of the chapter were present, it makes me think he probably was. If nothing else like Sicarius, he might have had a score to settle. However, as previously mentioned, at least in passing, Tigurius' xenophizing has begun to change just from physical combat, like against the orcs, to a mental psychic war. As everybody knows, the Tyranid Hive fleets are encroaching further and further into the galaxy with every passing year. The Ultramarines have done a lot fighting both Behemoth and later Kraken, so they're well versed and well aware of the threat. The Hive Mind that directs them is currently untouchable, and the shadow in the warp projected ahead of the Tyranids make things all the harder for those trying to study it due to the effect on Psychers. This hasn't stopped Tigurius from trying though, attempting to predict the movements of the Hive Mind and stop the Hive Fleets before they arrive. And he's actually done it with a plomb, managing to decipher Tyranid plans time and time again. Some say that such a feat could only be accomplished one way, by infiltrating the Hive Mind itself, something that would drive almost any Psyche insane given the shadow in the warp and everything else that Tyranids can do. We have no way of saying whether it's actually true or not, Tigurius would understandably be tight-lipped on the matter if he had done so because, you know, Inquisition, but if it's true, it would make him one of, if not the most powerful Psyche active in the Imperium today, aside from the Emperor himself, and possibly Mephistop, but shh, nobody tell Mephistop. 
Despite all of his heroics in the battles with High Fleet Behemoth or others, many claim that the high point of Tagurius' career came during a later invasion of Ultramar, this one by the forces of Chaos. In 854999M41, the Iron Warrior Warsmith Honsu launched an audacious and massive invasion into the former 500 worlds. Having sworn vengeance on the Ultramarines due to the actions of their exiled then restored captain, Uriel Ventress. Honsu gathered a host of allies, winning favour from Huron Blackheart and even securing the allegiance of Omkar, the word bearer demon prince who had fought on Kalth in the Horus Heresy but had later been trapped by chapter master Marnius Kalgar. Tigurius' premonitory powers actually let him down here, as he was completely unable to see the coming of the Chaos Force known as the Bloodborne. But once the battles begun and Ultramar lay besieged, he was back on form. It was his visions that dictated the deployment of the Ultramarines' response, sending different companies or numbers to different planets depending on the envisioned need. Said visions placed the greatest threat over the ocean world of Talasar, and so it was there that Tigurius would deploy himself, accompanying Chaptermaster Kalgar and either the first company under Severus Agaman or the second under Carter Sicarius, depending on who you ask. It was there that Umkar would be found, despite Kalgar's assurances of the Demon Prince's death as opposed to imprisonment. He lied, and then had to admit he lied. Oops. Compounding the problem was the demonic forces summoned by Umkar who threw themselves at the Ultramarine defenders. It took all of Tigurius' power to keep them at bay and prevent Umkar from escaping his prison and taking to the field himself. This intense use of his abilities drained the librarian one battle at a time despite Astartes' physiology, and after a month of strain, he finally gave out. Tigurius fell into a coma, though not before blasting the demons one more time en masse and erecting a barrier that lasted even during much of his sleep. The apothecaries could do nothing for him at this point, and he danced with death in his dreams, even though we are unaware if he did actually dream about death. But despite all this exertion, he simply refused to give up the ghost and die. As Amkar finally manifested and the battle for Talisar become near unsalvageable, the chief librarian woke up from his coma seemingly just as the demon prince had Kalgar defenseless. He couldn't walk, he's still not Mephiston levels of badass, shush don't tell Mephiston, but his psychic reserves were fully charged and ready to be unleashed. And so they were, with the aid of some civilians who seemingly carried his weight to battle, credit those civilians, he was able to bail Kalgar out with another massive psychic blast. This allowed the Ultramarines to rally and left Umkar vulnerable, allowing Ventress and Kalgar to combine their efforts and kill the Demon Prince. And I do mean kill, not banish. Ventress spoke his true name Malok Kartho and gave Kalgar an Athame dagger that had mortally wounded him on Kalth in the Heresy, from the tomb of 4th Company legend Remus Ventanus no less in a fitting connection. Meaning that, in fact, the chapter master did inflict a true, final death on Umkar. With Honsu having already fled Ultramar following defeat on Kalth by Ventress's fourth company, the invasion of Ultramar came to an end not long after, and assumedly Tigurius took a very long nap to let his healing finish up, and hopefully rewarded the humans who allowed it all to happen by getting him back into the fight. However, he wouldn't get to rest for long, as supposedly almost immediately after the Bloodborne were routed, a new chaotic force launched an assault on the 500 worlds. This one was under the command of none other than Abaddon the Despoiler in the aftermath of the fall of Cadia, but the Warmaster himself was not present, presumably due to having been nearly killed by Saint Celestine on the aforementioned Fortress world. Whether Sigurus exactly saw this coming is unclear, as he did have visions interpreted to mean the fall of Cadia and what not, but he didn't seem to have the same prescience as he'd been shown to have before. That didn't mean Tigurius was unable to help the defence of Ultramar, especially when Macrag itself was assaulted. But it is not for his role in the fighting that Varro Tigurius is in the annals of the Ultramar campaign. Instead, he was alongside the other leaders of the Ultramarines when they granted an audience to the refugees of Cadia, notably Belisarius Call, Saint Celestine, and Ivrain. When Kaul demanded access to the Temple of Correction, the place in which the all-but-dead Primarch Gilliman was interred in stasis, 
it sparked outrage amongst many, including First Captain Agaman. However, it was to Tagurius that Calgar turned for counsel above all, and the chief librarian was not of the same mind as the First Captain. He confirmed that what visions he had had included were enough to make him vouch for the new arrivals, and his conviction was enough to convince the chapter master in turn. As the forces of the Black Legion drew closer and closer to the Temple of Correction, Call and Rain got to work on healing Gilliman whilst the Ultramarines desperately held the enemy back. Yet when they moved to disable the Primarch's stasis field, the Chapter Master's conviction broke and Kalgar believed the Archmagos a traitor, but Tigurius would not back his liege. Instead, the Chief Librarian put his trust in the Yanari's leader that this was no trick, and despite the best efforts of Kalgar to stop her, Yevrain deactivated the field and the deed was done. Robert Gilliman rose again and drove the Chaos forces back from his resting place. Presumably breathing a heavy sigh of relief, Tigurius joined in this assault and was present for the official handover of Command of the Ultramarines from Chapter Master to Primarch in the aftermath. Macrag was secured soon after and over the next several months much of Ultramar was liberated in turn, with Tigurius and the librarians likely playing an important role. But when Gilliman decided to travel to Terra, he did not take the chief librarian with him on the Terran Crusade. Tigurius was left with Kalgar, tasked with securing the rest of Ultramar, while Sicarius was the most senior officer to accompany his Primarch. Unfortunately, Tigurius would not see much action compared to his fellows due to something else he could not predict and merely could hint at. The Cicatrix Maledictum. The appearance of the Great Rift wreaked havoc across the galaxy, especially for Psychers, and Tigurius felt its effects like so many others. Combine his prodigious abilities with the fact that it appeared so close to Macrag, and it really did a number on the Chief Librarian. He fell into a coma like he had during the Bloodborne invasion a few years prior, though this time it was supposedly to keep himself alive. Like before, he came very close in his dance with death to losing and being lost, seemingly remaining unconscious until the years before the Plague Wars and Gilliman's return to Ultramar. We don't quite know how long he was out, but he was up eventually, and though we can't place him in the invasion of Ultramar by the Death Guard, we're sure he was there, helping both on defence and on attack during the Vengeance campaigns. Aside from that, we're kind of unsure what he's been up to both at home and abroad, Though with a new wave of Primaris inductees, I suspect that the librarian have been keeping themselves pretty busy in getting a new breed of librarians trained up. Let's conclude this little foray by looking at what we know of the war gear and persona of Chief Librarian Tigurius. Tigurius' signature weapon and equipment are both tied to campaigns he has fought in during his career. The first is the Force Staff, known today as the Rod of Tigurius, recovered in the aftermath of the Battle of Andraxus and their salvation by the Legion of the Damned. Though it now bears the name of the Chief Librarian, the markings on the staff indicate it had an even more famous owner in ancient times, the legend of the early Imperium, the second person to sit on the Golden Throne, Malkador the Sigilite. Quite how such a weapon was lost from Terra is unknown, but if true, it would explain the intricate nature and incredible power of the Rod. It allows Tigurius to amplify and channel his abilities to even more devastating effect when he needs them. As for equipment, Tigurius is like other librarians and he has a Psychic Hood, a device that helps to nullify the powers of enemy psychers in battle and thus will allow the librarian to win in a Psychic Duel. Tigurius's Hood is a unique variant on the typical design, known as the Hood of Hellfire. It got the name after its first use, the battle with the seven sorcerers of Harka we discussed earlier. Tigurius had it specially modified for that battle, knowing how powerful the seven sorcerers were and asking for the hood to be tinkered with in response. Not sure how the tech marines took that one, but you know. The reason it got the name Hood of Hellfire is for the manner in which the sorcerers were dispatched, burned out by Tigurius one by one, yet also all at once, as a librarian put them down in, well, Psychic Hellfire. The Hood of Hellfire also seems to have a secondary booster for Tigurius, Energy Conservation, allowing the Chief Librarian to keep using his powers for longer before he needs a rest. 
Given how much he did before falling unconscious against Honsu's Bloodborne, it may well be thanks to the Hood that the Ultramarines survived long enough on Talisar for reinforcements to arrive. Outside of this relic and modification, Tigurius doesn't have anything else unique in his locker. A bolt pistol, albeit a scope one for some reason, power armor, and some grenades, nothing more. As far as personality goes, Tigurius is rather unlike your typical Ultramarine. When not on the battlefield, he's a bit more like your average Imperial Psycho. Withdrawn, a loner, lacking in the camaraderie or brotherhood of his fellows. Before Gilliman ordered it sealed in the aftermath of his resurrection, he was guardian of the Library of Ptolemy and the secrets within, and he knew the power of knowledge and guarded it well. He was not a tutor, more a philosopher and guide, helping those who spoke with him to answer their own question rather than directly give them the information. Tigerius knows that those unprepared for knowledge or without the full picture can be incredibly dangerous, as such a mind is vulnerable to corruption. Such is the risk with psychers in particular, a fact the chief librarian can use to ensure that his recruits are up to the task. However, all this question and answer riddly stuff does come with a downside, in that it bugs the heck out of everybody else. Ultramarines don't lend themselves to philosophy, so some say, instead being warriors above all else, so having one of their own turn their questions on them and generally get all philosophical and on their high horse, whilst also being a psycho which doesn't help, can be quite irritating, fueling tension between Tigurius and his brothers. However, that is not to say that the chief librarian is an uncapable leader or a non-useful warrior. Far from it. Once he steps foot on a battlefield, his quiet nature fades away and he is much more like his brothers. Dam notes and other incidents have proved he is more than up to the role of a commander, and any tensions off the battlefield are quickly forgotten once the heat of combat gets going, as he serves as an inspirational figure for those around him. In many ways, you could say that the attitudes of the Ultramarines toward Tigurius embody the Imperium's view on Psychers as a whole. They're undeniably useful, and they're worthy of respect when they're required, but any other time, they're problematic, a source of unease and tension. Nice little metaphor, that one. So end the tales of Varro Tigurius. The chief librarian of the Ultramarines has been a steady presence within the sons of Robert Gilliman, guiding them pretty much since his arrival in the chapter with his seemingly unique Skype skill set. And no, I don't know how he's the only divinator either. I don't get it. I don't want to say he's the most powerful Astarte Psyker. There's a certain Blood Angel who would probably dispute that. But... He's one of them for sure, both on and off the battlefield. With the tension between Primarch and Chaptermaster these days that we discussed in Kalgar's log, I wonder what the future will hold for the Chief Librarian. But if the whispers of his war on the hive mind are true, he may be a pivotal figure in years to come. Speaking of Gilliman, his return also brought a lot of change within the Imperium pretty much at every single level. The Primaris might have made the headlines, but another faction has appeared on the battlefields of the galaxy for the first time in millennia, changing the rules that govern them to fight in the new era. So, whilst our next log might be something of an addendum to a previous one, it will still be an intriguing case study that I've been meaning to do ever since word got out of their return. For now, I hope you've enjoyed this most recent log in our 40k mini-series, Champions of Humanity. Thank you for watching Tactica Imperialis, and I'll see you all again. Goodbye.